Lord Quigley. I'm very grateful for being afforded this question in a short debate and to the Minister and other colleagues for being here to consider uh, what surely will be a dominating issue in this Parliament, namely how the powers already promised to Wales and Scotland, together with the further powers being broached, will operate in a balanced governmental structure and that includes powers needed for England to take its own decision on English matters. We're standing at an important crossroad, my lords but with a government appearing unable to respond to the urgency of the moment, unable to give any meaningful, coherent lead. There's an urgent need to decide on the direction of travel. Otherwise, events, the piecemeal unfolding of legislation in the two chambers at Westminster, the EU referendum, the outcome of the elections next May to the devolved legislatures, and the fleshing out of the city's bill will lead to a situation in which Westminster seems like a boat that has no tiller or engine and a captain no chart to see the way forward. Can I make it clear from where I come on these matters? I want to see my native Wales, my nation, uh, have the greatest possible degree of independence. But that doesn't mean absolute independence as UKIP defined the term. We live as part of a community of nations, both in European and British terms. Plaid Cymru does not want Wales to cut itself off from such relationships. Rather, it wants Wales to be a full partner in its own right within such structures. We believe that Wales, like Scotland or Northern Ireland, or indeed England, has the right to independence, something which was accepted in the recent <coughs> Scottish referendum. And that may I say it was immensely to the UK's credit that this was recognised. The principle, of course, has already been accepted long ago for Northern Ireland, as it underpinned the peace process. And more than one Prime Minister has accepted that Wales too has that basic right. We are de facto living in a confederal union in which the constituent parts have the right to go their own ways. There is therefore a question as to whether or not the citizens of each nation wish to exercise that right. My party, Plaid Cymru, fought the recent election on a manifesto calling for home rule for our con constitutional objectives in this Parliament. Home rule isn't a new term. 130 years ago, the Irish Parliamentary Party won 85 out of 103 Irish seats on a Home Rule Manifesto. And had that been delivered, we probably wouldn't have witnessed the Easter Rising of 1916. And despite Gladstone's efforts, it was denied, and the UK, as then constituted, broke up in acrimony. Are we any wiser today? Are the parties at Westminster going to respond to the Scottish situation in a positive, inclusive manner? Or are we going to see intransigence with all that implies? Let's remember how we got here. Gordon Brown apparently speaking on behalf of the, all three of the then UK party leaders a week before the referendum launched his famous vow. He referred to it as Home Rule, a Devo Max type settlement which the Scots could secure if they voted no to independence. Scotland voted no. And some voters uh, who would have voted yes to a Devo Max had that been on the ballot paper were undoubtedly influenced to vote no because of that pledge. So what happened? On the 19th of September, we had the Prime Minister unwisely trying to jump the gun at 7 a.m., linking in the same breath the Smith Commission and English votes for English laws. Yes, we had the Smith Commission, and while many of its proposals were, and are, worthwhile steps forward, they certainly didn't add up to Home Rule. The three UK parties fought the general election on implementing Smith. The SNP, accepting that the referendum had ruled out independence in the immediate future, advocated Home Rule as a practical next step, deliverable in this Parliament. The outcome of the election in Scotland was unmistakable. The three UK parties placing their trust in the Smith proposals got three MPs between them. The SNP advocating Home Rule got 56 seats. There's no mistaking an elephant when it sits on your doorstep. And it's high time that the three UK parties accepted that it is home rule that the Scots endorsed on the 7th of May. The noble Lord, Lord Forsyth, summed it up last week when he said, the Smith Commission proposals are certainly not going to meet the aspirations of the Scottish people. May I also draw the Minister's attention to the words of the Conservative MP, Bernard uh, Jenkins, speaking in the second reading debate of the Scotland Bill, when he said, and I quote, I'm bound to ask whether the bill... Uh, the, the bill is really it for the future of Scotland. Is this the full and final settlement that will stabilise the union of the UK? 
I hey my, my doubts, he said, if I can <laughs> interpret the accent correctly. He added, and I quote, we need to start building up a consensus on what a full and final settlement for the whole of the UK might look like. We need a new 21st century Act of Union, which would aim to provide a balanced and equal settlement of powers across the four parts of the United Kingdom, and a mechanism such as a new Council of the Union for distributing UK tax resources on the basis of need and unanimous agreement. In the same debate, the SNP leader, Angus Robertson MP, stated, there's no doubt whatever that this bill does not match the pledges of the campaign or the spirit and letter of the Smith deal. Labour's shadow uh, Scottish Secretary Ian Murray MP stated, this might be a Scotland bill, but it has implications for the rest of the UK. He didn't, however, commit to home rule all round, which I would certainly hope would be forthcoming. So, but what do we mean by home rule? Putting it crudely, Westminster retaining sovereignty over defence, foreign affairs, the monarchy and the pound, with the Scottish Parliament having sovereignty over everything else in Scotland and likewise Wales, Northern Ireland and England. Of course, it's not that simple. Uh, it implies a federal, quasi-federal or con-federal constitution. It implies some federal taxes and some non-federal taxes, a model towards which we're already moving. And it implies one way or another an English chamber dealing with non-federal matters. And here I come to the heart of the matter as far as we in Wales are concerned. The key question for us is whether Scotland is to have a Scotland-only solution, a separate, separatist constitutional settlement um, uh, to the rest of the UK, or whether we are to have a balanced UK-wide settlement in which the new constitutional provision is not just made for Scotland, but also for Wales, Northern Ireland, and indeed England. In other words, are we going to get a coherent, thought-out structure of government which has a, response, a reasonable chance of standing the test of time? Or are we going to have a knee-jerk, ad hoc settlement responding to the most recent kicking suffered by the government, which certainly won't endure? So, in my final remarks, may I put forward some positive ideas by drawing attention to a keynote speech made on the 20th of May by Ply Cymru leader Leanne Wood AM, a name, face and voice familiar to many colleagues uh, from the election television debates. She proposed, and I quote, that all responsibilities, except for defence, foreign affairs, the Crown and the currency, should be transferable to one or all devolved governments, provided there is a majority vote in favour of such a transfer in the respective national legislatures. She added, this flexible approach allows for each nation to build a constitutional framework that is in the specific interests of the nation, but guarantees the consent of the people at all times. The Anwood also called for a strong Council of Ministers at UK level to replace the present Joint Ministerial Committee, a principle which the Smith Commission has also endorsed. Those three elements, a Council of Ministers, a clear devolution process, and a mandate by the national legislatures would, in her words, serve all the nations and peoples of these islands far better than the current web of complexities. She described this model as a proposal for a confederal United Kingdom. And this approach is one, one which I strongly endorse. I appeal to the Minister tonight to give an assurance that such a new constitutional model has not been ruled out. And although much work would need to be done on the detail, perhaps by a convention, provided that it has a strict 12-month working time limit to deliver its recommendations, which could then be legislated upon within two years and brought into effect prior to the 2020 election. As such, this proposal has the seeds of a way forward, which respects the aspirations of all four nations within a framework of cooperation. The United Kingdom, as currently constituted, is drinking in a, its last chance saloon. A new constructive partnership between the nations of these islands is still possible if leadership and vision is forthcoming. But it won't happen unless there is a new realisation in this chamber and in the other house of the urgency of the situation. Will the Minister please ponder on these matters and keep the House informed as ideas progress, giving us every opportunity to debate the unfolding Scottish settlement in the context of a new deal for all the nations of these islands, and in particular for Wales.